Hello and welcome back to another session. Today's session is a continuation of the last one about AWS Cognito. In the last session, we saw how to create user pools in Cognito and set up the authentication process for the users. I'll leave a link of that video in the description. Today, we are going to see how to configure identity pools, which helps you to obtain temporary limited privilege AWS credentials to access other AWS services. Identity pools can be integrated with identity providers too. So let's get started. Okay, so we are in the AWS console now. First, let's get into the Cognito section and select identity pools under that. So every identity pool has to have a unique name. So let's specify a name here. I'm just going with identity pool. And then you can optionally enable the support for unauthenticated identities. So enabling this means anyone who has access to internet can be granted AWS credentials. So this mainly is useful in the cases where your application supports guest users. That is a user who doesn't want to log into your application but still would like to use your application. Let's enable it for demo purposes. Next is the auth flow settings. By default, the enhanced flow is selected and it's better to leave it there as Cognito manages the call to STS and returns back the credentials in that case. If you enable classic or the basic flow, then Cognito returns the open ID token. Then you have to make an additional call to STS to get the credentials. So I'm going to leave it the default enhanced flow enabled. Then comes the authentication providers. You can select how your authenticated identities actually get authenticated. There is a variety of identity providers like your social IDPs, Facebook, Twitter, or SAML Open IDP, and even Cognito itself, which is the user pool option. As we already have a user pool created from last session, let's use that. So I'm going to quickly grab the user pool ID. So getting into the user pool and grabbing the user pool ID. Let's go back and put it there. And next is the application client ID. So select the application client ID and stick it here. So you can even have more than one ident uh, one authentication provider added to the identity provider. Uh, sorry, identity pool. Uh, for now, I'm going to leave it as one and created the pool. And there is one more step. Before we see how to use it, uh, we need to set the permissions for the identities. So this can be done through the IAM roles and Cognito creates the two roles by default for you. So one for authenticated identities and another one for unauthenticated identities. And it has some default policy document which has very limited permissions. Uh, as you can see, it is only for Cognito related uh, policy document. So anyways, you can edit it by getting into IAM. Uh, so that's it. We have our identity pool created. Next, let's see how to edit the permissions for these roles. I'm in the IAM section now. Let's edit one of the policies which is created by default by Cognito, which is attached to the authenticated identities. There is one policy which is attached to the role and it has very limited permissions. So as you can see, it has all Cognito identity actions allowed and mobile analytics one action and Cognito sync again all, all actions. So for demo purposes, I'm going to add another permission which allows listing all the S3 buckets. So I've selected S3 in the service and allowed list and for all resources. So this is just to see how the authenticated identity behaves. So review the policy and save the changes. So now we have added the list uh, permissions to our existing policy document. Next, let's see how all these works together. 
So I'm using Postman in order to demo this. The first thing we are going to do is log into the user pool domain by using one of the users that we created in the user pool during the last session. So this is in order to get the access token. Here the authorization URL and the access token URL has the user pool domain which we created in the last session. And the client ID and secret are the ID and the secret of the application client associated with the user pool. Then we are using the open ID profile as a scope of the user to log in with the auth type being OAuth 2.0. Now let's get the access token. This creates a new access token which expires in one hour. You can refresh it by using the refresh token. So I'm using the username and the password from the last session. So this generates the token uh, and it expires in one hour as you can see and you can refresh it by using this refresh token. So we are interested in the ID token here. So grab that. Before using this token, let's see what it actually has. This is a JWT token. So we can use the online JWT site in order to decode it. The decoded token has the information like uh, the user pool domain and uh, the user itself, the email uh, ID of the user and a uh, few details about the user. Now let's go back and create the identity. So I've copied the ID token and we will need to hit the identity endpoint in order to create the identity. So it takes the identity pool ID and the ID token as the inputs. The ID token has to be specified in the login section under the Cognito user pool IDP. So I'm pasting it here. And when you click on send, it will generate an identity. So it gives us back the identity ID. You can see this in the console as well. So let's go back and take a quick look. If I refresh this, you can see the new identity being created just now. So using this identity, we can get the temporary credentials. So let's go back to Postman and hit the same identity endpoint again, but this time with the identity ID. So in the body, we will specify the identity ID and the same ID token. This gives us the access token, secret token, and the session tokens. So once we hit this, uh, so you will get the access key ID, secret key, and the session token. So the first one was to uh, get the identity, and the second one was to generate the temporary credentials. So we have to use these, and we can uh, generate uh, we can hit other AWS access other AWS services so if you remember we gave s3 list permission to the role of authenticated identities so using these credentials we should be able to list the buckets so I'm pasting the access key secret key and those session token which we just got These will go into the authorization uh, headers. And once we hit send, we are using AWS signature as the authorization mode. As you can see, it lists back the buckets. But however, we gave only list buckets uh, permission for this role. We did not give uh, access for getting any specific object. So if we try to do that, it should actually fail. So let's try that as well. So I'm trying to get the specific object here. 
So as you can see, it returns as access denied because uh, this particular role doesn't have the permissions to get an object. It just has the permissions to list the buckets. So this is very simple. So once set up, let's, uh, it's very easy to get the temporary credentials without compromising the access key. As you can see, uh, the previous call still works for listing the buckets. So that's it for today, guys. Hope you found it useful. If you have any questions in this session, please leave them in the comments below. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.